Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our education station. As you can see here, we have one of our lovely friends, Nala, our ball python, and then Julia also has a awesome friend, Squeeze, our corn snake. So today we'll be doing a comparison again, um, but we'll go over a little bit about each of our animals first before we open it up for questions. Be sure if you enjoy our education stations and you uh, wanna make sure that your friends learn all the cool things that you guys do, go ahead, like, comment, and share them so then everybody can learn all the awesome things that we have about our animals. So Nala here, like I said, is a ball python. And so ball pythons get their names actually because when they're scared or uncomfortable or typically even when you first pick them up, they tend to roll into a ball. So pretty easy to figure out why they got called that. Um, as you see, she's a little bit of a larger snake. She's got a little bit larger belly, kind of like Jersey did last week, if you guys remember Jersey. Uh, that is because she is an arboreal uh, snake. So she likes to be up in those trees. She can climb really well and those uh, large belly, uh, filled with muscles will help her kind of climb a lot easier than skinnier snakes would. Additionally, you can find Nala in Africa versus uh, Jersey, if you remember, she was, we talked about it in her, t uh, in her video that she was found in South America and the Nala ball pythons are found in Africa a lot. So she can be found in pretty much any of those uh, regions except for the desert. She likes some form of tree, something to climb up on. And then the other thing that is really awesome about Nala, I'll go ahead and pick her up a little bit so you can see, is she has this cool thing called counter shading. So if you see, her belly is this kind of white color and then her uh, top of her body is this darker color. It allows her to be able to camouflage no matter where she is. Mm -hmm. If she's on that ground, that dark coloring will help her blend in with the ground, whether it's grass, shadows, uh, sand, all these different things. And then that light coloring on her belly, if she's up in a tree, will help her blend in with the sky above Above. because if you look up, it looks like it, the sky and the coloring that's lighter on the underside helps with that. Some animals that you maybe know that have counter shading would be sharks are probably the most common because they have that dark blue on top and light blue on the bottom. So if you wanna go ahead and introduce Squeeze a little bit more, All that would be awesome. Yeah. Well, Squeeze, she seems to be pretty comfortable right now. She was active earlier. Squeeze is a corn snake. Um, and so she looks a lot different than Nala. Squeeze has a really bright coloring um, and she doesn't have any counter shading like Nala. Um, so her top isn't really all that dark compared to her underneath. Um, and that is because she's gonna be a terrestrial snake or a snake that spends her time down on the ground. Now, Squeeze can be found in the United States, so a very different territory than Nala. Squeeze is found um, along the southeast, kind of New Jersey, down towards Texas. Um, they are occasionally found in Iowa, but this is a little too far north for a natural habitat for them. Um, really, Missouri is the farthest north they would come. Now Squeeze is called a corn snake, uh, partially because of this coloring. So she has um, this really nice bright orange coloring. It kind of reminds us of um, the corn on the cob as it dries out. Uh, they can have some more yellow coloring too and some more red tones as well. So there's a really big variety um, and they're all pretty brightly colored. And um, she also gets that name because she spends a lot of time in cornfields. So being a terrestrial snake, she's down on the ground and she hangs out in those cornfields or sometimes even in corn cribs um, looking for nice tasty mice to eat. And uh, she is a lot more slender than Nala. So we see, we saw Nala's really, really thick um, compared to her overall body length. And Squeeze is a lot more slender and long, and that's because she doesn't need all those extra muscles to climb. Um, she stays on the ground and um, can have kind of the more petite muscles to get around. That is awesome. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to start asking them away. I'm seeing a lot of comments that you guys love snakes. That is really good to hear. Uh, a lot of people tend to have a negative opinion of snakes, which we don't get, we work with them all the time. We think they're awesome. Uh, snakes are very important for the environment because they do help kind of keep those rodent populations that a lot of people don't like down. So if you don't want mice or rats around your house, then make sure you have a lovely little snake in your backyard mm -hmm. and you won't have to deal with that. Um, we did have one person ask if we can show you a rattlesnake. We do not have a rattlesnake in our department, so that is not something that we can <laughs> share. Uh, mm -hmm. But thank you for the question. We, yes. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. So one cool thing about snakes that a lot of people don't realize, we talk, if you've been here before, like I said, uh, we've talked about some of these facts with Jersey, but if you didn't know, snakes can pretty much eat something as large as the widest part of their body. And so due to that, I'm sure you can see that Nala would probably be able to eat something larger than squeeze. Mm -hmm. uh, so Nala can get anything from rats, mice, quail. Is there anything else I'm missing? Um, she gets some small guinea pigs and some small rabbits sometimes as well. Okay, so she gets a lot of different things and she also doesn't eat every day like we mentioned with Jersey. She eats about three weeks or one day a week for three weeks and then she has a week off. Kind of <laughs> like if you go really hard on a couple meals, you maybe don't want to eat <laughs> later in the day. Yeah. So she doesn't eat as much. So what does Squeeze do? So Squeeze actually eats every other week. Um, and the largest thing she eats is a large mouse, um, and she also gets some smaller chicks as part of her diet as well. And um, she doesn't need to eat as often. Again, she doesn't have quite the body mass as Nala um, and the muscle to maintain. So feeding her every other week is a lot more comfortable for her. Okay. And so the way that these guys can do that, where they can fit something like a rat in, this, in their small little heads, is they can dislocate their jaw as well as dislocate their bottom mm -hmm. jaw in half. So that allows them to stretch their mouth really wide. And if I remember correctly, use the comparison of, that would be like us eating a watermelon. Yeah, swallowing a whole watermelon in one big gulp. So that is, that's how they're able to eat. We have a couple questions coming in. Uh, we had one, Anne ask how many snakes we have. In our department, uh, with the education snakes, we have three ball pythons, we have a fox snake, a corn snake, two bow, two Kenyan sand boas and a boa constrictor. Do you know how many within the zoo we have though? Um, so we also have some Wilma pythons. Um, there's two of those in our discovery center. And then there is another corn snake that lives in our Australia area. Okay, so we have three corn, or we have three snakes within our zoo and six, seven, eight snakes within our department, yeah. <laughs> nine snakes within our department. I have to do the math in my head. <laughs> uh, we have a couple questions about garter snakes and someone asked why their odor is so bad, why they have a foul odor. Um, and so that's kind of similar to our fox snake, mm -hmm. uh, Smiley. She has, a, she has a bad smell sometimes too and that's actually where she gets her name, fox snake, because she tends to smell like kind of a fox musk. Mm -hmm. um, and so that musky smell that the garter snakes let off is actually a way to to help keep predators away. It's a uh, self-defense mechanism. When they get scared, they'll release it because a lot of animals don't like smelly things. Right. Let's see, did you have anything else about garter snakes to add? Um, no. All right, so while we're waiting for some more questions to come in, we did have some really cool facts to tell you guys about uh, snakes and how they can reproduce. So last time we used a really big word, I'm gonna try not to mess it up saying it, ovoviviparous. So that is what happens for boas when they're able to keep those eggs that normally they would lay outside in their bellies and hatch the eggs in their bellies versus outside so it looks like they're giving a form of live birth. Where that name actually comes from is humans or mammals or anything that gives live birth, that is called viviparous. And then if you are a egg laying animal like most snakes or birds, then you are going to be oviparous. And so that's how that big word is created, ovoviviparous, because it took both of those really weird words and shoved them together and made a strange word. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so Nala here is not ovoviviparous, but she does have another really interesting thing about her when it comes to reproducing. Uh, she does lay eggs. She'll go through the uh, thing of having a clutch, keeping them, keeping them incubated, taking care of them for about 60 days, and then they'll have uh, but what is special about Nala is she can actually go through this process called parthenogenic or parthenogenesis, which means that she does not actually need a male to reproduce. She can, when her body feels like she needs to make eggs and there's no male around, she will just kind of make little mini-me's or clones of, her, of herself and the DNA is exactly the same, but mm -hmm. she is able to lay eggs. And so Nala, if I'm remembering correctly, has actually done that twice in her life. Yes, she has. Um, and a lot of times when snakes do this, um, within that whole clutch of eggs they lay, um, some of them are what we would call slugs, and so they do have some unfertilized eggs. Um, and then there's usually a few that are fertilized um, and could potentially hatch into a snake. Nala has never uh, been successful hatching her okay. eggs. We've let her try to incubate them herself, and um, she's just decided not 
to be a mom, so. <laughs> she decided to lay the eggs, but not care for them. Yeah. <laughs> is there any, or what is Squeeze's reproduction if she were to? So she would also be ovoviparous, so she would lay eggs in a clutch, um, but snakes like Squeeze would need a male for those okay. eggs to be fertile. Um, and so she would lay those usually in some sort of nest um, or like a hole in the ground in a field somewhere. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we have a question from Rachel of, are any of your snakes escape artists? <laughs> um, I don't know of any of ours. That'd be a story for you if any of ours have escaped. Um, uh, our sand boas have learned how to open one of the enclosures that they got placed in and don't go in that enclosure anymore. <laughs> and, um, our boa constrictor isn't necessarily an escape artist. She's just really good at hiding. Um, when we let her out of her enclosure for exercise time, um, we usually lose track of her and she is curled up somewhere on a shelf um, and it'll, it'll take us a couple minutes to track down where she's decided to nap. That's always fun. Um, <laughs> I haven't, like I said, I haven't been here long enough to know those stories, but I've worked with snakes in the past, and yes, at my university, we had one that decided to learn how to unlatch the lock and get out. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my job. First introduction to the snake to go find him. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, a lot of snakes, as you mentioned with the escape artist, it's a little bit of their smart as well as they just have so much muscles. If you don't mm -hmm. actually think it through, they can just kind of pop the lid open. Right. So it, Make sure that you make sure your snakes have nice, secure closing closures. Uh, but the good thing about them being escape artists is they wouldn't do it if they couldn't uh, handle it. So even if they do get out, maybe fall a little bit, their bodies are adapt to be able mm -hmm. to handle that fall. Right. So it's not as big of a deal, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> Um, let's see, we don't have any other questions so far, but another cool fact about Nala and the ball pythons is, so we call them ball pythons all the time, um, but they also have another name that you could possibly know them for, and that would be royal pythons. Okay. And so royal pythons, they get that name because of a cool little backstory. Uh, Cleopatra actually was believed to wear them around her wrists, kind of like bracelets, because if I were standing up rather than sitting down, Nala would be wrapped around my arms. She finds that very comfortable. She kind of treats me as a moving tree, so <laughs> she likes to hang on. Um, and so Cleopatra used to do that all the time, and that is where they got the name Royal Pythons from, because royalty used to uh, like to keep them around. Very cool. Well, I remembered a really cool fact about Squeeze, um, and it has to do with her coloring. Um, so like I said, there's a variety of corn snake coloring, and um, there's actually a very um, special name for what Squeeze has. So a typical corn snake around these darker orange circles is gonna have a dark ring. And instead, Squeeze has a white ring. And so that's actually a slight form of albinism. And um, it is something uh, that breeders actually kind of try and get different color combinations. And um, corn snakes, I think, have been um, one of the snakes that have been in human care for the longest. Um, and actually bred specifically for different color morphs. Um, and so that's kind of something breeders will have snakes of different color morphs and uh, will breed them. And then a lot of times the offspring have a variety of then color morphs from that. I think I've even seen some called lavender or purple mm -hmm. horn snakes. So that, that definitely is a popular thing nowadays with snakes, uh, geckos, a lot of different things where they like those bright colors that right. would not be able to handle in the wild. They right. do bad things in the wild, but we <laughs> think that they're pretty. Right. Um, so there's definitely a lot of unique things. Typically, ball pythons are one of those animals that you would see a lot of different morphs. The fact that Nala is the traditional colors is really great for us for right. showing people how to do things or uh, how her camouflage would work, but that's not what most people see nowadays with ball pythons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe our other two ball pythons we have are a bit lighter. They're more of a tan color than that nice dark brown we see on Nala. Yes, and so that was another thing. I realized that I haven't actually told you guys how old our snakes are. <laughs> uh, Nala is actually 27 years old. So I always find it interesting when I'm working with animals that are older than me, and she is a solid like four years older than me. <laughs> uh, do you remember how old Squeeze is? Squeeze is on the younger side. She's actually nine years old. Okay. 
And isn't it typically with most snakes and human care, they can live anywhere from 30 to 40 years, yeah, depending that's on pretty the breed? Common. So if I remember correctly, ball pythons, though, they're one of the species that has gotten the oldest in human care, and the record is 47 years old. Wow. So they can get pretty old if they want. All right, we have a couple of questions. Alejandra asked, what are the basics to handle these kinds of animals, and how was your first experience? That is my phone. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Snakes, um, you know, if you do have them in your home, they take up a little bit more maintenance than say a cat or a dog would. Being a reptile, they do need a heat source. Um, so our enclosures have heating pads as well as heat lamps um, to keep that temperature really um, nice and warm for them. We also have UV lamps in there for them um, to get that UV that they would get out in the wild. Uh, knowing what your snake should be eating is another really important thing. Um, if you offer too much food to a snake, sometimes they just quit eating altogether and so that can be kind of hard. So there's a little bit of research um, when getting them as a pet, uh, but there are definitely species that can be really good to have in your home as long as you're equipped to have that. So as long as you do your research with the animal, it makes it pretty yeah. easy to do. Um, and if you were talking about actual physical handling, the snake, she, like I said, since she's arboreal, if I were to pick her up, she, ball pythons are mm -hmm. one of the easiest ones to handle once you have them in your hands because they just wrap around you and they're nice and comfortable. Right. Uh, terrestrial snakes sometimes are a little bit more fun <laughs> little more because active. they're a little bit more moving. Uh, I like to call it treadmilling when they like to keep moving and you just have to keep mm -hmm. moving your hand underneath them so then they have a place to go. So uh, handling snakes is pretty easy. Once again, if you know what to do, I would not recommend going outside and grabbing a snake in the wild. Right. They probably will not like that very much. Right. Our <laughs> snakes are very used to being held. Um, they've been in human care their whole life. And so they're very used to people. They understand that we're not a predator. We're a resource, actually. So um, they're not hesitant when we pick them up. Uh, I'm pretty sure the first time I held a snake, someone just handed it to me and said, here, this is how you hold a snake. And um, it all kind of happened so fast, there was no time to be afraid or tentative. And um, then it it's all just gets easier from there. Oh yeah, especially <laughs> when snakes are this comfortable with you. That's mm -hmm. most animals, when they're comfortable with you, they're not going to give you any issues. And Nala, like I said, she's 27 years old. She's been doing this a while. So she's, she's a very pro. accustomed to humans. Uh, we had a, new, a question from Alicia. Her son wanted to know how long these snakes can get and, or how long they can get and how long they are. Um, so it's a little hard to measure because they can be active and they're not always in a straight line. Uh, I'd say squeeze is maybe between like three and four feet long. I'm also really bad at judging length, so. That might be inaccurate. Squeeze probably is closer <laughs> to four and a half Closer feet. to four and a half feet. <laughs> okay. Um, and for the most part, she is full grown. She could gain a couple inches, maybe get a little bit thicker as she gets older, uh, but she's pretty much at her full size at this point. And then Nala here, Nala is probably closer to that four and a half, maybe even five feet. Uh, ball pythons can get anywhere from four to six feet is common. So she's in very much in an average size. Uh, these guys are actually, fun fact, the smallest of the African python species. So if you think <laughs> she's big, just wait until you see other, other versions of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, she is fully grown since she's 27 years old. She's probably not gonna get much bigger except maybe a little bit more girth, but she's, she's got a nice size to her. So she yeah. doesn't need any more <laughs> um, But that's about how long they can get. When it comes to our other snakes that we have, uh, if you guys remember Jersey, she was about 11 and 11 half feet long. Mm -hmm. That is actually a little above average for them. 14 is the max that they've ever gotten. So we're all right with our Jersey <laughs> staying that size. Long. Uh, and then some of our other snakes, for our fox snakes, she's probably going to be about the same size as Squeeze, can only get six feet at max, so mm -hmm. she's gonna be skinnier. Um, the most interesting snake that we have, though, for size-wise, is our Kenyan sand boas. Right. They can only actually get three feet uh, long, typically, for the females, and the males will barely even get to 20 inches long, so the males are gonna be a lot smaller. And so our girls are about six years old and about two feet, two and a half feet right now. Yeah, they're around there. So they're, they're getting to their adult size. All right, do you have any other fun things that you wanted to mention about our snakes? Uh, well, we might have talked about it before with snakes, but I always find it interesting. Um, you guys might have seen Nala and Squeeze sticking their tongues out a lot during this video, uh, and that's actually how they smell. 
Um, so they haven't been down here before, and these wood blocks we have them with, um, they haven't ever been on. So um, they're using that tongue to kind of smell and discover what these new things are. And the way they're able to smell with that tongue is actually really cool. They have an organ on the roof of their mouth called a Jacobson's organ. And when they stick their tongue out, each side of the fork picks up air particles and then brings it into their mouth. And when they press it against that organ, their brain is able to read a scent. Um, and so in the wild, that's how they would track down their prey um, that they're trying to find. Um, and kind of as those air particles get stronger and stronger, they know they're getting closer. That is awesome. So that's how they smell and that's how they smell. Um, do you know how they hear? That's something that a lot of people don't realize with <laughs> reptiles. So most reptiles rely on vibrations to kind of figure out what is around them. Um, some of them even have a third, what we call a third eye on the top of their head that senses light. Um, that's pretty cool. And so <laughs> our iguana that we've had on here, he kind of has a third eye on the top of his head. Um, but yeah, they don't, they don't hear sounds. They're gonna rely on um, their sight, smell, and then feeling those vibrations to kind of stay aware. Okay, and then there are some animals that do have ears. They're going to be their ears, so to say. <laughs> so our ears stick out. Uh, the, some animals, like some lizards and geckos, they don't have ears like ours. Instead, they just have a hole. Right. So what little bit of sound that they can get uh, other than vibrations will come in through those holes. So a lot of people, when they're looking at our geckos or lizards, are like, what's a little spot on their head? <laughs> that would be their ear. <laughs> um, so that's a, that's a pretty fun thing that a lot of people don't know. So it's just a weird fun fact. I like my weird fun facts. Uh, if we don't have anything else, though, to add about these guys, and if you guys don't have any other questions, you're welcome to keep putting questions if you want, and we will get to those as soon as we can. Otherwise, we are glad that you guys came out once again yeah. for our education station, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week as well. Thank you, and have a nice rest of your day. Bye.